We are given a polynomial function in factored form as to determine the zeros and multiplicity, as well as the degree and in behavior. The zeros of the polynomial function are the x values, where the function value is zero. And because the polynomial function is in factored form, the values of x that make each factor equal to zero are the zeros of the polynomial. So looking at the first factor of x plus one, we know x plus one is equal to zero when x equals negative one, x equals negative one is a zero of the polynomial function. But notice how we have the quantity x plus one raised to the fourth. So because we have four factors of x plus one, the zero of negative one has multiplicity four. Next, the factor of x plus two is equal to zero when x equals negative two. Negative two is a zero of the polynomial function. But because of the exponent of two, we know we have two factors of x plus two and therefore the zero of negative two has multiplicity two. Next, the factor of five x plus one is zero when x equals negative one fifth. If we can't tell that by inspection, we can only set the factor of five x plus one equal to zero and solve. The first step would be to subtract one on both sides, giving us five x equals negative one, and then divide both sides by five, and we do get x equals negative one fifth which is a zero of the polynomial function. But because the factor of five x plus one is raised to the second power, this zero has multiplicity two. And then finally, the factor of x minus two is equal to zero when x equals positive two. X equals positive two is a zero of the polynomial function, but because the factor of x minus two is raised to the third power, the zero of x equals two has multiplicity three. Next, we're asked to determine the degree of the polynomial function. The degree of the polynomial function is the same as the degree of the term with the highest degree. Let's analyze this function and see if we can find the leading term or the term that would have the highest degree. So beginning, we know we have a factor of three. Then the term with the highest degree from the quantity x plus one raised to the fourth would be x to the fourth. So we'll multiply by x to the fourth times the term with the highest degree from the quantity x plus two squared would be x squared times the term with the highest degree from the quantity five x plus one squared would be the square of five x or 25 x squared. And then finally, the term with the highest degree from the quantity x minus two cubed would be x cubed. So now multiplying, three times 25 is 75 and then we have x to the fourth times x to the second times x to the second times x to the third. When multiplying and the bases are the same, we add the exponents. Four plus two plus two plus three is 11, giving us x to the 11th. So this would be the leading term of the polynomial function or the term with the highest degree. And notice how the degree of this term is 11, which means the degree of the polynomial is also 11. And now for the last part, we're asked to determine the in behavior of the polynomial function. The in behavior of the given polynomial function would be the same in behavior as the power function g of x equals 75x raised to the power of 11. Which means we should be able to determine the in behavior by knowing the leading coefficient is positive because it's 75 and the degree is odd because the exponent of 11 is odd. If we go back to our notes, as long as we know the leading term or the term with the highest degree of any polynomial, we can determine the in behavior just by using that first term. Where if the term is in the form a times x raised to the power of n, if a is positive, we can find the in behavior in this row. If a is negative, we can find the in behavior in this row. So in our case, we know a is positive and the degree is 11, which is odd, and therefore this gives us the in behavior of our polynomial function. Whereas x approaches negative infinity, or as we move to the right, the function values or y values go down without bound approaching negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, where we move to the right, the function values or y values increase without bound and approach positive infinity. Remember, function values are along the vertical axis. Or of course, if we needed to, we could always graph the original function, or we could just graph the first term of the polynomial function, which is 75 x to the 11th. Let's take a look at both of these graphs. So here's the graph of the original function, which might take some time to graph to adjust the window properly. And here's a graph of g of x equals 75 x to the 11th, which would be the first term or the term of the highest degree of the original polynomial function.
So notice as x approaches negative infinity, or as we move to the left along the graph in this direction, notice how the y values or function values are decreasing without bound and are approaching negative infinity. And the same thing is true for g of x equals 75 x to the 11th. As x approaches negative infinity, or as they move to the left, the function values or y values decrease without bound, approaching negative infinity. This does verify, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And then, as x approaches positive infinity along the given function, we are moving to the right. Notice as we move to the right, the function goes up without bound, meaning f of x or y approaches positive infinity. And the same thing for g of x equals 75 x to the 11th. As we move to the right, or as x approaches infinity, f of x or y increases without bound and approaches positive infinity. So as x approaches infinity, f of x also approaches infinity. I hope you found this helpful.